Supersize Sales video. I am coming to you virtually <laughs> from the little shop around the corner in the You've Got Mail movie. Isn't technology fun? You can just put yourself in a movie. <laughs> but that is by design. I wanted to let you know, those of you who have been waiting, the reprints for the 2021 and 2022 Bolo books are ready. They are in my store. And I have set up several different listings. And this was like putting together a Chinese menu <laughs> because I wanted to give you options. Some of you have uh, one or two books already and you want the third book. Some of you don't have any. Some of you just want the 2021 20, and 22 reprints. So I have several different listings where you can buy these. And the combo packs uh, do come with a discount. And if you buy more than one book, they are shipped in a padded flat rate envelope for a flat $9. So you will definitely save money if you buy the combo pack, um, if you're trying to get the whole set. So um, yes, these are going to be a thing. I've gotten outstanding feedback on these books. You can check my eBay feedback page to see what other sellers are saying. But I just wanted to make this quick announcement uh, because I've been waiting for these to be ready and they are now in my store and uh, you can purchase them. Just wanted to let you know if you've been waiting that these are now in my store and you can go check those out. Okay, the next announcement is um, a couple of shout outs to my wonderful viewers who sent me some presents in the mail. Marlene from the podcast sent me this hat from Ward Ranch in Oklahoma. She talked about her horses and how they uh, know my voice. She listens to the podcast in her barn. So, so now I can be official walking around South Carolina with my Ward Ranch hat. And it's a great conversation piece. People are like, where is that? What is that? So <laughs> hats are fun. And Tina, who was on the podcast today, sent me this fun South Carolina Starbucks mug. How cute is that? And no, I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to keep it because it's just fun. It has all kinds of things about South Carolina, birds and food and locations. And um, it's just really cute. Yes, it is a Starbucks mug. And I did not know that South Carolina was the nice state. <laughs> so I did experience that when I moved here. People are just so nice and friendly. And they strike up conversations and I just love it. Thank you, Tina, for thinking of me. She said the day we recorded the podcast, she actually went out thrifting and saw this mug and just thought it was a divine intervention that um, she wanted to send this to me to celebrate my new state. And look, shrimp and grits. Oh, I love that. So anyway, thank you so much, Tina. I appreciate it. Okay, that's it for the announcements, and let's get into your amazing $100 and over sales. We are going to start with Holly Feger and her beautiful pink coffee maker. She said, I picked up this pink Cuisinart drip coffee maker at Goodwill for $6.99. I have never done coffee makers before, but I think I saw something about pink ones in this group or the videos. I checked the comps and when I saw it, I figured I would give it a try. It was fairly easy to clean, worked perfectly. I listed it and sold in 24 hours. Listed at $129.99, sold on best offer for $100. That is such a fun little coffee maker. <laughs> if I saw that, I'd probably buy it for myself. So great investment, $6.99, sold for $100. Donald Hux found this great item at Goodwill for $1.99. I could tell it was worth something when I saw it. I looked up some similar ones, so I listed it high, hoping to get a good offer. I feel I got a good offer at $100 plus shipping. Took two weeks to sell. This is an antique French bread or chopping cutting board. 
well-aged, beautiful country look. Yes, that would go very well with the farmhouse or shabby chic decor theme or to hang on the wall at Cracker Barrel. <laughs> I always think about that when I see these rustic decorative items. It's like those restaurants have to get their items somewhere and um, this would fit right in. Amy Johnson, I have approximately one dollar or less into each puzzle. I collected these vintage wooden puzzles, 70s, 80s, and 90s, from various thrift stores throughout the years. My daughter loved puzzles when she was young, but she is nine now and I no longer have anyone to love these. This one hurt a little to sell. Sold for best offer of $100. Took about three to four weeks to sell. The item is a lot of 12 vintage play school puzzles, uh, wooden puzzles. So maybe $12 investment sold for a hundred. Kim Knox Engel. I found this at the bin so I paid under a dollar for it. Sold in a few weeks. Took best offer of a hundred and five. Vintage Levi Strauss denim jeans orange tab conductor cap. That is a fun item. A dollar sold for a hundred and five. Helen Dunning, York. I bought this at a garage sale, estate sale, for myself. A year later it was still sitting there so I decided to list it. I paid $30. It sold for full asking price of $110 plus shipping. Took about two weeks to sell. This is an audio unlimited wireless indoor speaker system. 30 bucks sold for 110. Ginger Lampbright. I bought a bag full of silverware for $5 last summer. I finally sorted and listed it all on September 2nd. Got a $110 offer on these today and took it. So about 75 cents into it sold for $110 with free shipping. This is a set of six Reed and Barton Georgian Rose Sterling Silver Salad Forks. Next up is Karen Williamson. We got a new bed and my daughter told me I could make more money by parting out our old bed. So that is what I've started to do. Sold this remote once for an offer of $85 but she returned it because she couldn't get her air pump to work with it. I relisted and within a week it sold for full price of $119.99 plus shipping. I have many more parts of the bed to list. I guess you could say it cost me nothing because it was a personally owned item. So this is a sleep number dual chamber bed mattress wireless remote. And I just think everything's working out for our highest good <laughs> on returns you know you see that request for a return and your stomach drops oh great but a lot of times this happens and it sells for more the second time so you just have to reprogram your thinking when you see a request for a return and the person actually ships it back and you have it is okay this is working out for my highest good that person wasn't supposed to have it it's going to go to somebody else. Kathleen Gifford. This beautiful full-size quilt sold in a day. I found it at a small thrift shop, paid $12 and sold it for $125. Amish star pattern quilt handmade 86 by 82. $12 sold for $125 and that is very pretty. Next up is Scott Ware. Got this at an estate sale for $25. Sold in three weeks for best offer of $125. It is a University of Kentucky quilt full size. Yes, that is a fun item. $25 and flipped for $125. And here is our cover photo. 
Holly Johnson sold this sealed 1975 Superfection game found at a thrift store for $3. Sold after a month for $125. This is Lakeside Superfection Puzzle Race Game 1975. Okay, raise your hand if you played this game or the other one called Perfection and you have to um, get everything get all the blocks in there it's, it's a puzzle you have to work and there's a timer and uh, when time runs out like the bottom pops up and all the pieces go everywhere and um, I just remember playing this game and every time the timer ran out it just gave me a heart attack it, it was just so much anxiety to play this game um, but I guess that's the point is you get better you get faster um, but yeah I I kind of have PTSD about this game <laughs> Because it, it, when it would blow up, it would scare the crap out of me. <laughs> Zachary McDoor, our garbage man philosopher. This is a set of Charming Tales mouse figurines bought at a yard sale for $20, sold on a five day auction for $127.50. Charming Tales mice figurine lot. Oh, it's Fitz and Floyd. That explains it. That is a uh, higher end brand of collectibles. They make a lot of Christmas and holiday stuff. But yes, Fitz and Floyd is uh, a little more expensive than some other brands. So 20 bucks sold for $127.50. Suzanne Keen, Vintage Banana Republic Safari Jacket from the 80s. Paid $6 at an estate sale and sold on offer to watcher for $127.49. Took about two weeks to sell. So it is a Banana Republic Safari Jacket, size 42. Six bucks, sold for $127. Terry Wilcox. I sold this on best offer of $135 after two weeks. This was my personal mixer that I've had since 2009. Still worked great, just didn't use it anymore. Well, probably because a lot of your 10 children have left the nest and maybe you don't need to use it anymore. <laughs> Terry was on the podcast and uh, yes, she is a mom of 10. Anyway, still worked great, just didn't use it anymore. I originally paid $400 and think $135 is a great price. Yes, Vitamix Super 5000 Blender with the manual. I love to go through old stuff I'm not using anymore and sell it. And everyone should if you're already selling on eBay because um, your house is a treasure trove without even buying anything. KC Vetterly paid up for these at the thrift store when they were marked $48. I was surprised that they knew what they were because these are made to look dirty and distressed. It's good to know the style if you ever see them, so don't try cleaning them. Sold for $150 in one day. The item is Oliver Cabell Leather Sneakers. Interesting, I've never heard of that brand. So thank you, Casey, for sharing, and uh, we will not clean them if we find them. <laughs> Kimmy Whites, out of a trash pile, so free for me. Took best offer of $150. I think it took about three to four months. Field and Stream Store Display Tent. Well, that's cool. Free, and it sold for $150. And it's just a little tent. I guess you could play Barbies or G.I. Joe or any little action figures, but um, that's a neat item. Next up is Mike Mushluski. Bought this puzzle at a local Goodwill for $5. Listed it high on auction without any bids. Buyer reached out and offered $150, but could pay after the 1st of April. Agreed to list at $150 buy it now starting on April 1st sold this morning for full asking price. Vintage Springbok Circular Jigsaw Puzzle, 1966. Ooh, that's a nice vintage gem. 
So $5 sold for 150. Okay, Jackie Basie sold in a month for $150. I don't pay over $4 per sweater, usually two or three. This buyer is in Ireland, so pirate ship netted me about $20 in shipping too. It worked out as I was going to ship domestically for a flat $20. This is a lot of 32, 100% cashmere clothing for upcycling crafts, also called cutters. So if she paid $3 for each one, that would be $96 investment and sold this lot for 150 and I love the recycling aspect of this, the repurposing, because as you know, I love cashmere. It is a luxury fabric and it just hurts my soul <laughs> to think cashmere is going into the landfill. So uh, these cutters, meaning they have holes or damage or something wrong with them, um, are going to someone who's going to make them into something new and beautiful. Okay, Mary Alice Fontenot Gray listed Saturday and sold Sunday for best offer of $150. It was given to me. I actually didn't know how high to list it. This is a vintage chenille bedspread, double peacocks just gorgeous. She had it priced at $250 and took an offer of $150. Leanne Horvath was surprised to find Le Creuset at Goodwill. Paid $6.99. Sold in about four weeks on offer to watchers for $158. And this is the Le Creuset Orange Flame Loaf Pan with cast iron bottom. That is a great find. Seven bucks sold for 158. Christy Palmer Rodriguez, Brahmin handbag, bought at Goodwill for 29, put on auction, sold for 162. That is a lovely bag. Brahmin red leather crocodile embossed handbag. So, yes, Goodwill marks things up, but if you can sell it for many times their price, then that works. It does take a while to get brave enough to pay more than just a few dollars for inventory. Um, but as you move along in your eBay journey, you will become more confident. So um, don't avoid the boutique section of Goodwill because as you've seen in these videos, even if you have to pay up a little for something, you can still walk away with good profit. Ginger Lampbright has another one. I sold this last week for best offer of $100. Buyer never paid, so I relisted it a couple of days ago. Sold today for full asking price of $175 plus shipping, and the buyer has paid. And it's already packed from last week. This is a Samsung Express Color Wireless Printer. She didn't say what she paid for it, but it sold for $175. Louis Prizzy bought two of these at a local vintage flea market for $10 each. This is the second one to sell for full asking price. Took about eight months for this one. Mattel, 2008 Disney's Rare High School Musical doll set. $100. And $84.95. Aaliyah Cave, free to me. I listed one to see if it would sell. It sold a month later for full asking price, so I messaged the buyer to let her know I had a second one. She was interested and paid the same full asking price for this one also. They were shipped to Puerto Rico, which is a state. You don't have to do anything different when you ship to Puerto Rico. They're just people like us that want to buy stuff. This is Hinkley Three Light Pineapple Bathroom Wall Mount Lighting Fixture. It was free and she sold it for $184.99. Carlos Chavez, our mailman, and he delivers. 
I got this 2012 Vintage Creepy Crawlers Bug Maker Play Set for $15 from Facebook Marketplace and it sold for full asking price of $199.99 plus shipping. Took about a year. But what a great investment. Where else can you invest $15 and walk away with $200 a year later? So keep that in mind. Karen Goodner Monks paid a total of $1.50 at a yard sale. Posted it super high since there were none others listed just to see and happily took a $200 offer after a couple of weeks. I think it's my first APO FPO sale. And what she means there is those are military addresses. So um, again, you don't have to do anything different. That is uh, within the USPS. It may go on a boat, it may go on a plane, but it is within USPS. So please make sure that you're not excluding APO FPO those are our dedicated military people and they too just want to buy stuff. I've actually shipped APO, FPO ever since I started eBay and you can look up the address just Google it and see where it's going and I've shipped things that went to submarines and aircraft carriers and the middle of the desert so um, make sure that you are shipping to the military. Okay, end of public service announcement. This is Brawl in the Family three volumes uh, book set. So $1.50 and sold for $200. Kathy Nunez Marinello bought this Brahmin leather purse at a local rummage sale for $1. Sold for $200 in three days. Exciting sale. I'll say so. Brahmin Amelia Toasted Melbourne Croc Embossed Leather Tote Bag. $1 sold for $200. Rachel Hilst. I bought this Viking Glass Epic Cat in Blue and Eek Blue at a thrift store for 5 bucks. I bought it on a Friday, listed on Saturday, and took a best offer of $200 plus shipping on Monday. That is a very fun item. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a cat person. Anyway, 5 bucks sold for $200, and what a beautiful item that you were able to rehome. Lori Turner, I found this treasure at Habitat for Humanity Restore that I typically do not shop at because they tend to price items too high. I paid $8, which hurt. I'm cheap, but there wasn't a lot of them listed. He sold for $200 in about a month. He did have two signatures. One was handwritten. The item is rare. Schmid, Lowell Davis, Brer Wolf, Oh, Uncle Remus collection, Br'er Wolf. Okay, $8 and sold for $200. Karen Monks has another one. Paid $4 at a family run estate sale. I looked it up on my phone but saw no comps, but it was just so pretty. Terapeak came through to show the last one sold for $199, so I listed it for $224, and it sold in a couple of weeks for full price. Paragon Stitchery United States Flower Map Needlecraft Kit paid $4, sold for just under $225. Terry Bishop bought at a garage sale for $20, listed and sold same day for full asking price. Rare vintage Disney Pinocchio 1950s hand carved wooden marionette. It sold for $249.99 and it cost her $20. Lisa Goodman paid $13 at Goodwill, sold for $250 plus shipping after about eight months. 
Vintage Braided Rattan Wicker Elephant Side Table. Now, I don't like to ship big things, but I think that would be pretty easy um, because it's not super heavy and you might have to telescope some boxes, but um, that's very unusual and people like elephants. So $13 sold for $250. Brett Stewart. I found this toy box at Goodwill about three years ago for $20. It sat in my death pile. I finally decided to refurbish it by cleaning it up, put all new decals on it, replaced nuts and bolts, and put on a new plastic window. Total investment about $50, took an offer of $255, took about four months to sell. Little Tykes White Space Capsule toy box chest okay so it's like you put your toys in there twenty dollars sold for 255 Leslie Wilson bought this Hoover concept 2 vacuum for ten dollars at an estate sale on 75 percent off day priced it high and sold for an offer of 325 plus shipping in about a month Wow, vacuum cleaner. Ten bucks sold for three hundred and twenty-five. Okay, Nancy Sell, who lives in the Northeast, I think kind of near the LL Bean flagship home office area, paid fifteen dollars at an estate sale for this LL Bean tote bag and sold in about 10 days for an offer of $390. It's going to Hong Kong. I've sold many LL Bean tote bags in the $50 range, but was thrilled to find one in a rarer color and in such good shape. This is a vintage 80s LL Bean boat tote canvas green. This is definitely a bolo. I always look for these and I think I found one in my entire eBay career and um, it was a little stained it wasn't in great condition but it still sold so this was a $15 investment that sold for $390 Ben Detto found this at a high-end estate sale 10 minutes from my home in North Atlanta Last day of the sale was 50% off the $375 price tag. I offered 100 and they countered with 120, which I accepted. Listed it as a seven day auction and uploaded a video of it chiming. Ran up pretty quick and sold for $446 plus shipping. This is an antique and Sonia figural mantle clock. So he paid 120 and it sold for $446. Stacy Smith bought a shoebox of a few Barbies, three Barbies, two extra bodies, and some wigs for $50 at a garage sale. This was one of the dolls included. I only know a minimal amount about Barbies, but had random luck in the past, so I took a chance took an offer of $475 as she has a blue stain on her leg. I had no idea what I had when I bought this. Imagine my delight. This is American Girl Barbie high color long ash blonde hair. So her investment was $50 for a whole bunch of stuff and she sold this one doll for four hundred and seventy five dollars. Ken McNamara paid forty five dollars sold for five hundred and ninety six set put together from pieces purchased throughout the year from various thrift stores set has been sitting around collecting dust finally got it listed and it sold within four days and just look at how shiny and clean those pots and pans are. This is Salad Master stainless steel 15 piece cookware set. He paid $45 and sold this for just under $600. Okay, Eileen Cole. I picked up 
four of these vintage light fixtures at a yard sale for $15. I listed the first pair about 18 months ago and they finally sold. Sold via offer to watchers for $750 plus shipping. Now you may know Eileen as the book lady, but look at her venturing out into other things, which is not a bad idea. This is a pair of vintage Italian style wall sconce candelabras. And so this was $15 for four of them. And this one sold for $750. Sue Ann Acres. I responded to a Facebook ad that was selling a vintage play school toy. I paid for it and as I was leaving she asked me if I liked Playmobil toys. I replied that I did and she showed me two Playmobil items that I purchased. I paid 200 for this one and it took two months to sell. So this is vintage Playmobil Western Electric train set. Vicki Gordon Penne. This was a consigned piece in my store. It was owned by the aunt of the woman that brought it in. I don't think she had any idea how valuable it was. I get half the proceeds, so this is the best sale I've ever had. This is a Pablo Picasso edition Madura ceramic bowl. Bird with tuft made in the 50s. The sale price was $1,825. And I love this because to the untrained eye, this does not look like an $1,800 piece of artwork ceramic bowl. So um, just showing you anything is possible on eBay. Congratulations to everybody who made it into the video and keep posting those sales and I'll keep making these videos. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week with the seller shout out video. Have a great week on eBay. Bye everybody.